First of all, I'm very proud that the idea of the second hand cloth become a multi million operation program. One day we were told because we we're not making any profit, we need to close tech down. I was one of the people who said no, no way. And we counted the number of people working at that time in tech. And the discussion was about the social capital. It's not the financial gain. The social capital is the number of people who are working for, is for tech at that time, even if we did not make any marginal profit. Because they are the profit themselves for us, for the family, for the community, for everything. This is number one. And this was in the 90s. This was in the 90s. This number one. Number two, you became an industry. You're not just collecting second-hand clothes or second-hand <coughs> items. In an industry, you have to keep growing and diversify, diversifying the activities. Now, second-hand clothes, tomorrow <coughs> is excess stock and the other items. Don't just keep looking at one side of the coin. Your coin could have two sides, three sides, four sides, or multi-dimensional sides. See, you succeeded <coughs> in the second-hand clothes. You have to create another dimension for tech to keep growing, because you are an industry, you are not a company. Number three is the movement of humanitarian work. It started institutionally in the West, in the whole West, even in the East, institutionally, by Islamic belief. Somebody would like to challenge me, I'm here to challenge him or her. What has been happening in different countries, the Muslim Ummah were not institutionalized like Islamic belief is and was. There were a lot of organizations calling themselves international humanitarian, but they are not institutions, they are not structured properly. But you have to stand up and say, we are the people who made the change. We are the people who made the change. That's why the people who do not like you are not other organizations, but individuals, are governments. Because you are rising to a higher standard which will allow you to make more changes to save lives, to protect life, and to change the lifestyle of people. So as the brothers were talking about Islamic belief as an entity, you have to be very proud if you are a part of it, and you are leading such a movement, which is called the humanitarian movement. And take should be considered one of the pillars of the backbone of not only Islamic belief but of the humanitarian movement. As they said about you, we are and you are the unsung hero. The people who, do not, who did not see tech, do not understand tech, and do not believe in tech, are dead meat for me. No matter what degrees they have, no matter what qualifications they have, no matter what titles they have, and no matter what job they have. They are dead meat. Because if you look at me, because I'm a factory worker, differently to somebody sitting in office, you are a dead meat. You are not only dead meat, you are a rotten and a dead meat as well. Because without me, you are nothing. Without the poor people, Islamic belief cannot stand on its feet. Without the displaced people, the refugees, and the prayers of the orphans and the widow, there is no Islamic belief. There is nothing. It's because of those people we exist. It's because of those people Allah gave us barakah. It's because of those people we lead and we keep leading. We're not leading because we have, as I said, degrees. 
or some, somebody who is talking nicely to others. No. We are leading because of the prayers of the poor and the needy and the displaced and the refugees and the widows and the orphans and the raped women and girls as well. We are the in the leadership because of the prayer of the oppressed and the prayer of those people. Don't ever, don't ever, don't ever and never forever think that you are something more important than the one who pay our salary, which are the people who claim that we are serving them. The poor, the needy, the orphans, the displaced, and everyone. Inshallah. This is where we stand as the Islamic Relief, and this is where you stand proudly, a stick with high head. High head. Director, CEO, President, so what? We are all equal. When we meet Allah, we all will stand naked. As mm -hmm. Aisha was talking with the Prophet, oh my God, I'll be naked in front of the Nobody will care. It is nafsi, nafsi, my soul, my soul. And people will be sweating and they will be drowning in their sweat on this mighty day because each and every one of us will look at his or her amal and you can see in the video the intention not only the amal itself say so, oh my god how I am this scared of people seeing this no president no kings no queens no boss no professors no ministers no prime ministers no, 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 equal. The only people who will have high head at that time are the people who had clean hearts and good amal. Not the people who had the best job and the best income and the best salary and the best house. You be one of them. You be one of them because you are one of them. Inshallah. We thank today Brother Nasser for many things, for his contribution as a worker, as a worker. You understand what I'm talking about? As a worker, to tick then to Islamic Relief, then to Had, then to the job he's doing now to help other organizations and consultants. He represents a product of an institution. As Abdurrahman used to say, the man who holds in his hand the red card, he gives the red card to everyone. Remember Abdurrahman, the African? Yeah, yeah, he's still alive, alhamdulillah. <laughs> you see, and he keeps telling people, giving them red card, red card, red card, or, the, or a yellow card and red card. At that time, he told you to start <laughs> Well, I went to see him straight away. <laughs> yeah. I said, you should have given me a red card. Yeah, that's it. So, so, but unfortunately, the only one who has seen Islamic Leaf from the very beginning is you. Ali Deen. Not Ali Deen. Azhar. Azhar and his father. Yes. And none of you. If you have not seen the Muslim road time, you have not seen Islamic Leaf. Don't ever and never become arrogant because you have not seen an organization without an office, without a budget, without employees. Abdurrahman, Abdul Jabbar will tell you that. Siraj will tell you that. Azhar and his father will tell you that. If you want to know the story, go to the story teller. So he or she can tell you. Abdul Jabbar would be the best one for that. Inshallah. Yes, sir. The story. Thank you <laughs> for everything. <laughs> and if you want to give an advice to somebody, just to conclude, don't ever make it public on a newspaper. I'll smash you by my feet. By my feet. If you want to advise me, come to my house and roast me, or grill me, or fry me, 
or boil me. But to put it in a newspaper, I will smash you because you are hitting an institution which has been built by the dua of millions and millions and millions and millions of people. And I will never allow it to happen. In my time or in your time. Be careful not to be done again. Social media. Jazakumullah. Yeah, whatever it is. Whatever. We're going to have. Uh, okay. Jazakumullah. Khair. May Allah bless you. Assalamu alaikum wa